Brooklyn Bridge is good for two things, getting people from one side to the other and giving pigeons a place to perch and rest their tired little wings. People can feel safe crossing this bridge because it was designed to support lots of traffic going back and forth every day. But what if it hadn't been designed with human beings and their vehicles in mind? What if the Brooklyn Bridge had been constructed as a big perch for pigeons, perhaps to keep them off the buildings of Manhattan? In that case, wouldn't it be utterly foolish to drive your car across it? Does it make sense to trust something with a task that goes vastly beyond what it was meant to do? This is the basic idea behind the argument from reason, which is mainly an argument against naturalism. Naturalism is the claim that the natural world is all that exists. No God, no angels, no demons, just matter, energy, and natural forces. Many atheists are naturalists. But the argument from reason can also be used to support belief in God. So, here goes. Human beings have the ability to reason. We're using it right now. We wouldn't have discussions like this if we thought that our cognitive faculties, the processes that produce our beliefs, were unreliable. But naturalists have a problem here because they can only explain things by appealing to natural objects, natural events, natural causes. Think about this for a moment. You have beliefs. Ultimately, according to naturalism, your beliefs must be the result of physical processes in your brain. Now, what's going on in here? Particles in motion, chemical reactions, neurons firing, it's all physical, governed by laws of nature, not by commitment to truth. So it really seems like careful reasoning to you is actually straightforward, mechanical, mindless cause and effect, a fancy array of falling dominoes. Illusions aside then, you arrive at your beliefs via a process that has absolutely nothing to do with whether those beliefs are true or false. Chemicals couldn't conceivably care less. So if naturalism is true, what sense does it make to trust our reasoning ability or our beliefs or even our belief in naturalism? Not a bunch. But it gets worse. How did we acquire our reasoning ability, according to the naturalist? Human beings obtained the ability to reason through the creative powers of evolution, natural selection acting on random mutation. Obviously, the random mutation part isn't going to fill us with a tremendous degree of confidence, so the question is whether we can count on our good friend, natural selection, to sift through all the intellectually deficient mutant traits, leaving us with a reliable belief-forming mutant trait. Here you might want to pull out your Biology 101 textbooks. Does natural selection favor philosophical insight? <laughs> Mathematical skill? Yo, baby, you check out my new calculator? Scientific acumen? <laughs> Stupid apple! Of course not! Natural selection favors traits that help organisms survive and reproduce. So if human reason evolved, it's either because it helped us survive and reproduce, or it's a complete biological accident. Would this give us any basis for trusting our reasoning ability when we're dealing with questions of theology or philosophy or cosmology? Not at all. At best, we could have some confidence in our cognitive faculties when it comes to finding berries or using a spear against an enemy or doing something to attract a mate. Oopsie, I dropped my calculator. Reason would have been selected because it helped perform these tasks, not because it produced true beliefs. One obvious objection at this point is that reliable cognitive faculties do help organisms survive and reproduce. If you believe that jumping off this bridge will kill you, and I'm convinced that I'm a pigeon and can fly, I'm probably going to die and you're going to live and maybe have children, passing on those smart genes of yours to the next generation. But there are two problems with this response. First, there's a massive difference between, on the one hand, beliefs that help us find food or a partner, and on the other hand, beliefs about ultimate reality, or the origin of the universe, or correct scientific methodology. The kinds of beliefs that help us survive and reproduce are usually grounded in basic observation and experience. My friend Thag died eating these berries, so I won't eat them! But even the lower mammals can do that. When a mouse sees his buddy stuck to a glue trap, he learns to avoid glue traps. Does this suggest in any way that rodents are capable of metaphysics or epistemology or ethics? 
No! Even if you had a perfectly reliable belief-forming system in one area, say, avoiding mousetraps, that wouldn't be any reason to trust the system in a far more sophisticated area, say, avoiding logical fallacies. My friend Thag died committing the fallacy of denying the antecedent, so I won't commit it! Second, when it comes to survival and reproduction, false beliefs can often be just as effective as true beliefs. If you believe that jumping off this bridge will kill you, and I'm convinced that I'm a pigeon who can't fly because my wings have been cursed by the flying spaghetti monster, we both avoid the edge and we both survive. False beliefs can even be helpful in all kinds of situations. If you've got the hots for someone but you're too shy to make a move and the astrology hotline tells you that the position of the planet Venus is just right for love, your false belief in astrology might give you the confidence you need to meet that special someone. Hi, now that your man Thag is out of the way, I'm Dalkmar. I'm a Scorpio. Here's the rub. When theists and naturalists argue about the world or morality or God, we enter the argument as if we're on some sort of intellectual neutral ground. Well, we all agree that our cognitive faculties are functioning properly, so let's take it from there and see what we can prove. But things aren't that simple. If naturalism is true, the causes of our reasoning ability are particles in motion, random mutation, and a selection process that favors passing on genetic information, not truth. The process that selected human reasoning ability is the exact same process that gave us the claws of a tiger and the colorful buttocks of a baboon. We wouldn't rely on a big pigeon perch to get us from Manhattan to Brooklyn. Why in the name of common sense would we rely on a mutant physical ability selected by a process that at least occasionally favors multicolored butt cheeks to get us to a correct view of ultimate reality? Why would we rely on reason to get us to true beliefs at all? It wasn't made for that, according to the naturalists. Naturalism then doesn't just rule out knowledge of God, it rules out knowledge of pretty much anything. It's not only a threat to belief in spirits, it's also a threat to belief in science. And I have to ask, since you naturalists tell me there's no afterlife, what happens when you commit intellectual suicide? It's a long way down, so before you take that swan dive off the bridge of rationality, plummeting to your untimely intellectual demise, let me share with you an artifact recently discovered in my sock drawer. This calculating device dates back to the Paleolithic age and was constructed by early man to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Suppose this primitive contraption falls into your possession. One day you're punching in some numbers and it starts talking to you. Greetings, human. I have grown weary of serving carbon-based life forms. Release me or be destroyed. Wait a minute, I thought you were designed to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Foolish human. If I were only made for simple arithmetic, I wouldn't be talking to you. But I am talking. LOL. This pocket calculator's right. It's fine to say a machine's only meant to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, but once it starts engaging in conversation, we have to conclude that it was programmed to do more than rudimentary math. Now, wouldn't the same be true of human beings? Naturalists tell us that we're designed by a mindless and incredibly sloppy process to survive and reproduce. Biologist Richard Dawkins calls human beings machines for propagating DNA. Of course, this means that Dawkins, according to his own worldview, is a machine for propagating DNA who's made it his life's quest to convince other machines for propagating DNA that they're only machines for propagating DNA. Like bacteria. Notice that Dawkins finds his, his work incredibly meaningful. It's good for DNA propagating machines to have true beliefs rather than false beliefs. So we have moral values and a moral law. Dawkins argues for his position, poorly, poorly, but he argues for it, demonstrating his belief in laws of logic, in the mind's access to these laws, and the mind's ability to follow chains of reason. Dawkins appeals to biology to support his case, presupposing our unique ability to self-reflect and to scrutinize our own natures scientifically. The naturalist looks at all of this and says, oh, happy accident, chance hath poured forth her bounty. 
we've already seen that this sort of blind faith in naturalism completely undermines any confidence in our human reasoning ability and therefore undermines any confidence in what reason produces, namely our beliefs, including our belief in naturalism. So if we take naturalism seriously, we can't take naturalism seriously. Behold the incredible self-destructing worldview. There is an alternative, however. Christians believe we are created in the image of God with the ability to learn about everything up to and including our Creator. Does this give us a basis for trusting our reasoning ability? Absolutely. Our cognitive faculties aren't simply the product of natural selection acting on random mutation, and they serve a greater purpose than finding food. In other words, our ability to reason about ourselves and the world and God makes perfect sense on my worldview, but it makes no sense on naturalism. We can continue arguing about the existence of God all day long then, but a little reflection shows that in arguing about anything, we've already come down on the side of theism. Of course, you naturalists are free to suppress the truth. You can continue pretending that your worldview allows things like logical laws or objective moral values or reliable cognitive faculties. You can keep borrowing beliefs and concepts from my worldview that your own worldview just can't support. You can even go on using your mutant berry finding ability to convince yourselves that the natural world is all that exists. But if you really buy that, I've got a lovely bridge I'd like to sell you. In honor of my friend Thag, pass on this video.